Right, our next guest says you may want to pump the brakes on the banks, especially ahead of next week's Fed meeting. Joining us now, Steve Chavaron, equity strategist and portfolio manager at Federated Investors. Steve, great to, great to see you again. Hey. Um, so is it just the banks or is it all of these um, sectors that were dead cats bouncing, as Carter yeah, put I, it? I don't know if I'd go as far as the dead cat. I, I'm somewhere in between, I think, mm -hmm. Carter and Tim here. And what I mean by that is it's very enticing. When you look at the move in the banks today and you put it in the overall context, and that context says rate, rates bottomed a week ago and have moved higher. The city surprise index bounced into positive territory a week ago, and value in general has moved up. So th there's an inclination to want to say, okay, this is, the, this is the move in the value cyclicals that we've been waiting for. I think you need a little bit of confirmation on that. I think you need to see what the Fed does in a week. I think they need to deliver against market expectations. I think the ECB similarly has to at least provide some some delivering. I think this meeting is not as important as the one that, that comes in November when Christine Lagarde takes over, but move the ball forward. Um, and then I think you need the data to continue to come in strongly. If what we're talking about is a global reflation trade because the stimulus that's been put in the system helps the economy to move in the, in the back half of the year, that's incredibly bullish. Um, and so I'm enticed by it, but I'm not willing to kind of jump all in on it just yet. So how are you, how are you positioned in the markets right now? It sounds like you're you want to see how the data plays out. It sounds like you think, I mean, the Fed will probably cut 25. The ECB will probably deliver on something. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of in the expected realm. Yeah. The data is a little bit of a question mark at this point. So what do you do with your yeah, portfolio? We think about the market right now is really a battle between the PE and the E, right? The PE should be higher. We've taken the discount rate for stocks and we've cut it in half. The only reason why the market isn't higher is because the market's concerned about recession. And so they're worried about that E part. So I think what it really comes down to is how are earnings going to come through. And that's why trade matters. That's why Hong Kong and Brexit matters. Our view is that our base case scenario is earnings are going to be okay. They're going to be flat to slightly up. You are going to get a revaluation higher because of those lower yields. And that's where you play out over the next kind of six to 12 months. However, over the course of the next month or so, I want to see how the ECB goes. I want to see how the Fed goes. I want to see how earnings season. So, when we were here earlier in the year, we were 8% overweight equities. We brought that down to 3% in the, in the kind of May-June period. And we're content to stay in that area and see how the next month or so breaks, expecting to move higher, but being prepared if risks materialize. So in your experience, do you find that these value names, they bottom when the data starts to turn, or do they bottom when they get to a price that's cheap enough that people say everything bad is priced in, and I'm just going to wait it out. There can't be that much downside left. The risk-reward is appealing. I here. think that's what makes today so tempting. Uh, they, too, they do tend to discount this. Um, they may be discounting the Fed next week and, and delivering not just the, the, the cut that I think everyone expects, but the endorsement of further cuts to come. Um, and so that's why I, I want to see that come through, because if they disappoint, then that momentum can get snuffed out. My guess is, is you know, my hope is that the Fed delivers, but we'll see what they do. Is it a central bank story or is, there, is it, are we making not enough, do we not focus enough on what's going on in Hong Kong? Are there sort of these exogenous events that didn't exist six months ago that have become more in our purview now, but we're just not paying attention to? So when we came in here all bulled up in January, um, we did so because we did not foresee a recession this year. And I think you can explain from September of last year to today as an ebb and flowing of recession risk. We still don't see a recession in the next 12 months. And so we think that that's the, the, the central point here. Now, the market's concerned about one. So insofar as the Fed eases, that reduces those concerns. As trade tensions ease, that reduces those concerns. As we get to the third quarter earnings season, if those estimates for 2020 are okay, that will further ease concerns. So I think it's really a story about if you see a recession in the next 12 months, you need to be bearish. And if you don't, I, I think there's opportunity to the upside, particularly because yields have fallen so much and the discount rate for equities has halved. And if the carnage that we're seeing in sort of these mid-cap high flyers, yep. tech names, like mm -hmm. Coop and Okta, things down yep. 10 and 15 percent, and you're seeing it in others like Workday, if that starts to spill over into Visa, MasterCard, Microsoft, mm -hmm. which a little bit it did yep. today, do you think the market can endure that? Well, that, that's the market structure question, right? right? Because the U.S. is so much kind of growthier and, and more tech-heavy than, than other indices. I think you can certainly see the overall market move higher. You may see maybe a little bit more international relative performance. You may see small caps do a little bit better in that environment rather than the kind of existing trades. But we've seen periods over the course of the last several years where growth expectations rise, the value cyclicals run, and the market does just fine. So I think it's, I think it's capable of doing that. Steve, good to see you. Thank you. Steve Shepard, Federated Investors.
do you think, Tim? So it's, you know, the central bank conversation had to come into that, mm -hmm. and Steve's right to bring it up. Guy's right to em emphasize it. It's still the number one dynamic. But when you talk about the E in earnings or the P-E ratios that he's so talking much. about with lower rates that should have higher P-Es, um, the things that rallied today are things that, that largely, when I talk about, we talk about banks, um, and let's talk about transports, and let's talk about some of the other cyclicals, those are not demanding valuations. The demanding valuations are in things like Starbucks and food stocks mm -hmm. and restaurants and, and, and even some health care relative to itself. So when you look at where the market can go, um, even with the recession, if recession is off the table, this rotation makes a lot of sense, and it doesn't have to have um, some kind of earnings-generated you know, dynamic behind it. It just has people get back to expectations.